Would you like to learn some cloud computing fundamentals or some networking fundamentals? Most specifically, learn all about network address translation, otherwise known as NAT? If so, this video is for you. Hi, my name is Michael Gibbs, and I'm the founder and CEO of GoCloud Careers. And we're an organization that's dedicated towards building the most high-performance cloud computing careers. Personally, I've been working in technology for over 25 years now. And I've been helping others get their first tech job or get promoted in tech for more than two decades. And I want to help you get cloud hired or cloud promoted. In today's video, we're going to talk about network address translation, which is a critical cloud networking skill. It's a critical networking skill, and it's essential cloud computing fundamentals for cloud architects as well as cloud engineers. Now, in today's video, we will talk about network address translation, or NAT, versus port address translation, or PAT. We will talk about static NAT, and we will talk about dynamic NAT, and the use cases for each. Knowledge of NAT is absolutely a critical cloud architect skill, or a critical cloud engineer skill, and obviously, it's a critical network engineer skill as well. In this discussion, we're going to be beginning with PAT, or Port Address Translation. Port Address Translation is something that we call NAT overload, and here's the reason why. In traditional NAT, we map a single IP address to another IP address, and we translate between them. No big deal. But in Port Address Translation, the reason we call it NAT overload is we translate multiple addresses to a single address. So if those of you that are familiar with firewalls and you've got your tough internal network and they all have private addresses and the firewall translates all those private addresses to a public address so your systems can go out the internet, update their operating systems, reach whatever they want and come back but their systems are not reachable from the network, that is using port address translation. But it doesn't just have to be a firewall. For example, in the cloud computing environment, we could, go, we could get an AWS NAT gateway what does that system do? It basically connects our systems to the internet and translates those private addresses to a public address. So network address translation overload or NAT overload is really where we take multiple addresses and translate them into a single address. So what happens is we've got all these addresses. Let's say we've got one address. It gets translated to another address with a part number that's added. And then the next address gets translated into the same address, but with a different port number. And that way we've got dynamic things going out there. And we can use one address for many, many users inside of our systems. It's very efficient from uh, an IP addressing standpoint. It enhances security because your systems won't be reachable from the internet. And uh, it's very simple to use. Now that was NAT overload, otherwise known as PAT. Now we're going in, getting into Static NAT. Static NAT is very simple. We translate a single address to another single address. So if this is in English, it's translating it to Greek. If this is Greek, it's translating back to English. Very simple. Now, network address translation is, stat generally speaking, static NAT is static NAT because one address is always mapped to another address. So why might we use static NAT? We might use static NAT for the following reason. Let's say we've got a company who bought another company. So far, so good, right? Well, most organizations use private addresses to address their systems inside of their network. And we all get our private addresses from the Internet Engineering Task Force Request for Comments, RFC 1918, which specifies our IP address space, which is typically the 10.0.0 slash 8, the 172.16 slash 12, and the 192.168.0.0 slash 16. There are private address bases, so chances are when one company buys another company, they're overlapping IP addresses. So let's say company A is a car company, and they buy company B, who's a tire company, and they need to access a server on the tire company. So far, so good, but assuming the IP address is used by the tire company and the car company, they can't talk to each other. So we might create a policy that would translate the car company server to another address, and so the tire company server to another address, the car company can access the server. That's it. That is static NAT. We do it. We need to consistently translate one address to another address. That's static NAT. Now, the last type of network address translation is dynamic NAT. And this is where we take a pool of addresses, 
and they can be assigned dynamically to a system. I need an address for a period of time. I get one dynamically assigned to me. I translate this address to another address for a week. It expires. Somebody else or some other system can use that. So this is when you need temporary um, translation of your systems in a non-static manner. So what are we discussing in today's video? We discussed network address translation versus port address translation. We talked about NAT overload, otherwise known as port address translation. And we gave you the example of the firewall that translates all of your internal addresses to a single address on the outside. We talked about static NAT. When we mapped one address to another address, typically speaking, to deal with one company who purchases another company. And lastly, we talked about dynamic NAT, which is a dynamic way to translate addresses. This is Michael Gibbs. I'm the founder of CEO of Go Cloud Careers, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please let me tell you about two programs that we have to truly enhance your cloud computing career. If you desire to become a cloud architect, we have a cloud architect career development program that will teach you everything you need to know from the fundamental skills to even your resume, as well as interviewing so you can get that first cloud architect job. And if you want to be a cloud engineer, guess what? We have a complete and total comprehensive package for that, which will teach you everything that you need to know to become a cloud engineer and, of course, get cloud hired. Otherwise, we wouldn't do it. We're not just about certifications. We're about making sure our students get cloud hired. I look forward to seeing you in another video next week. Please check out the things in the description below. Take care.